Hey everyone, this is Sam from Wargamer Online. Today I'm going to be painting one of my models for Space Wolves Army, and it's Ulrich the Slayer. So it's 40k model, but I'm using it in my 30k army, and I'm going to use it as a chaplain. I'm going to be trying out wet blending for the first time. I'm going to do a red cloak on this guy, and I'm also going to show how to do diamond shaped gemstones. I'm going to paint them in green, and there'll be other things like how to paint fur and how to do little bits of metallics and bone and things like that. So, as with the rest of the Space Wolf Army, everything's been primed with Mechanicus Standard Grey. It's a spray from Games Workshop. And I'm just starting by blocking in some of the base colours. And I'm doing Steel Legion Drab, and I'm going to paint all of the fur areas. So you want to keep your paint thin, do two or three coats with this colour. And just build it up gradually. There is a lot of fur on these guys, uh, Space Wolves a very wolfy McWolfus so you can pick all sorts of different browns and desert looking colours and you can go to town with with the different colour tones that you want to go with I'm keeping it pretty basic and using the same sort of ones on the entire model and uh, I only generally do up to two different types of fur colour maybe three if I'm feeling like I want it to be a bit different so the next step is blocking in Rhinox hide on all of the areas which are going to be bone and this guy's got teeth all around his, he's basically got a teeth necklace um, I'm going to paint the second tone of fur tails which are around his waist and his helmet is also bone as well so I'm going to block that in um, the other thing like with his horn you can go with a metallic horn or you could paint it in wood. I've done like a ivory base for it so that's going to be painted brown as well and then I'm going to surround it with metallic. This model has also been converted so normally he would be holding his helmet in the left hand um, but because I'm using this in 30k my guy's got a boarding shield it's pretty filthy He's going in a unit, so reduces the enemy's attacks by quite a bit. So he's got a shield, he's got his Crozius chaplain weapon, and instead of using a normal Space Wolf head, I've put the the helmet which he was holding on his head instead. So it's only a minor conversion, but it's quite a nice one, and it makes him look different to the standard model. I'll use the normal Ulrich head somewhere else in the army. The other area that I'm going to paint with Rhinox hide is this cape. So because I'm going to go with a red cape, I'm going to start with a brown for the base colour. Just so it's got a nice dark colour to begin with rather than the grey. It will be the, the first time I'm going to try wet blending. And I think it's one of those techniques that takes a bit of time to practice. And yeah, if the more you do, the better you'll get at it. Um, I found it fairly difficult. But it looks decent in the end. It's just a matter of having patience and keeping your paint wet. So now I'm going to wash all of those areas we've just done. Um, we're using Reichland Flesh Shade for this. I'm going to go over the Steel Legion Drab Fur first of all. You could use Agrax Earth Shade as well. Uh, it's completely up to you. I've put Reichland Flesh Shade on it because it is different. Normally I put Agrax Earth Shade on it and simply using a different shade can change the tone of the fur. So it's quite good to put different colours on there. You can use the Seraphim Sepia or Sepia as well. Now we're going to go over with a highlight of Bane Blade Brown. And you can either dry brush this on the fur or you can pick out individual individual clumps of fur which is what I'm doing now if you're going to be going for the speedy option dry brushing it at this stage is definitely your best bet because you can always tidy up the armour around if you get any onto there by mistake this cloak was quite nice though the fur on it is easy to pick out some of them some of the older models are not as easy to do and dry brushing would be better I'm going to do the next highlight on the fur which is Carrack Stone and it's done in the same way but you mainly just want to pick out the tips on this. Now 
You could do patterns on these as well, so you could do some black spots or stripes if you wanted to. You can literally do anything. And the final highlight for this is the Shabti Bone. You don't need to add this colour. I normally only do a base colour and then two highlights and I do that as standard. But because this is a character model, I've just put an extra colour in and on as many areas as I, I feel like I need to put it on. And to finish the fur off, we're just going to blend all of those highlights together using Reichland Flesh Shade mixed with Medium. And it's a one-to-one -one mix, so it doesn't leave the watermarks and it doesn't darken it too much. It just blends the colours together. Okay, so this was the wet blending stage. Uh, I'd already put some corn red onto the cape and it's a mixture of colours. I've got Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider Red, Corn Red and Rhinox Hide. And I've mixed the colours back and forth. So I did a full layer of corn red, then I mixed some Evil Suns onto the raised areas and then you blend the two wet colours together. And then when you've done that, you want to mix some Rhinox Hide into the corn red in the in the most recessed areas. So what I've done here is just picked up some Wild Rider Red and got a bit of water on my brush. And then I'm just blending the Wild Rider Red into corn red. And you just do it very gradually. Um, my brush strokes are from top down as well, so it's flowing with the cape itself. So any sort of brush lines that your brush strokes that you'll get will be in line with the way that the cape is flowing anyway and you just very gradually blend those two colours together. You can see how bright it was and what it's been turned into now from mixing with that wet corn red. So the thing that I've mixed into the paint, rather than just using normal medium or water, is a slow dry fluid retarder and I bought that from Liquitex. It's called Liquitex Professional. I picked it up on eBay. It was about £10 for a bottle and you don't use much of it, but you do a couple of drops with the paint and you can see I've used a hell of a lot of paint there um, but it keeps it wet for a long period of time so you can do this blending without worrying about the paint drying up too much obviously if you live in a, a hot area it will dry up quicker but just to experiment with this stuff it works brilliantly compared to you just using water and all I'm doing here is grabbing a mixture of the, uh, the three colours and blending them together again It's definitely something I'm going to try more often on character models. I'm definitely not going to bother with rank and file or you know infantry, space marines. I'm just going to be working on the character models because it does take a, a lot longer. And if you want to get an army done, doing it to this sort of level will take months as opposed to a couple of weeks to get an army done. So you you sacrifice getting many of the models done but the quality is definitely a lot higher. You see just grabbing some of that Rhinox and mixing it back into the red. It really is back and forth. And I would probably say to start with stick into just three colours and wet blending between the three you can get quite a few gradients between those anyway. So I would, doing this again, I would just go Rhinox Hide, Mephiston, and Evil Sun Scarlet, and sorry, not Evil Suns, Wild Rider Red, and mix those three colours. So that cloak's done and dried. I'm going to go into the metallic areas now. So we're using Lead Belcher, and we're just going to go around the exhausts that are around his mask, or his pipes. Just use a small brush here because we're going back onto all the details now. And you don't really want to go back over and do all of the the bone areas again. Now the tops of the wolf tails, the metal on there, just painting them as well. And any other details that you think should be silver. So I'm painting the top of the backpack and a couple of other areas as well. I'm going to move on to using warp lock bronze now. And it's the same sort of thing, just pick any areas that you think should be metallic. I'm doing the, the horn, the, the bit where he uh, drinks from, from his drinking horn, as well as the end of it. And 
Maybe he doesn't drink from that horn. Maybe that's just for making noise with. He's probably got a bigger one somewhere else. And also the trim on the armor, we're going to paint with warp block bronze. I've done this on all of my Space Marines, so all of their shoulder pad trims, I've done warp block bronze. And you can paint them different colors. If it was 40k, there's a lot of yellow shoulder trim. So you might be wanting to paint this in yellow instead. We're going to go into highlighting this now. So all the areas you've just used warp block bronze on, use Rune Lord Brass instead. And you just want to do a layer highlight over the top of it. You can see how many colours are on this guy already. You really don't need to pick that many for him to stand out. Okay, now we're going to go on to the bone areas again. So everywhere that was painted with that Rhinox hide that needs to be bone, go over with the Xandri dust. So I'm going over the teeth again, and I'm leaving the brown at the recesses and at the ends of things like the bones and the horns. And always paint in the direction that the detail is going in. So for this tooth, I'm painting top down. Even the horn, I'm painting top down and just move the model around so that you can get a nice straight line on it and you're not painting at angles where your, your brush will end up smearing over the wrong bit. He's got a couple of vents on the helmet as well, there's two little circles on the side of it. So I'm going to paint the Xandri dust around everything apart from that bit. And I'm going to pick those back out with Lead Belcher later on. We're using Mournfang Brown now, and this is back to the other fur tail. I'm just going to pick this out the same way as we did the first pelt. Just picking out the individual tufts of fur. Again, you could dry brush this instead. It makes it much quicker. And I'm trying to do the tops of the tails, so I'm going to leave the ends more Rhinox hide, so they're a little bit darker towards the bottom. And then we're going to use the final highlight for this fur, which is Scrag Brown, and just pick those off, kind to keeping them in light lines. So I'm doing the middle part, and then the left, and then the right of the tail. But I'm not doing all of it, just so there's a little bit of a pattern to it. And we just add a touch of Rakarth flesh to that as well. Now we're going to go on to using the next metallic, which is Retributor Armor. Uh, this, this gold is brilliant and it goes on really well. We're going to go over the top of his Crozius weapon and just pick the whole thing out in Retributor. We're also going to paint a couple of the details. So on his belt, there's a skull on there, we're going to paint that in this gold. And on his chest piece as well, there's a little part where a gemstone goes into, we'll paint that gold. And on his helmet as well. So when we do the gemstones in there, they're outlined by gold. Now we're going to wash using Agrax Earthshade over all of the areas that we painted with that bone colour. And this is just to shade it down so that we can then highlight it back up again. And the main thing with this is make sure you get it into all of the recesses. Go over the fur pelt as well. If you wanted 
to mix a bit of medium into this to make it thinner you can do it all depends on how dark you want the wash to be if you want it a little bit lighter adding more medium will make it a lot lighter but because we're going to go back into the golds especially we're keeping this nice and dark see how dark the bone has ended up just from having one wash on it. I'll just cover the shield with the same thing there. Okay, now we're going to go and highlight up the armour. So the first colour is Dawnstone, and normally I would just dry brush this on the standard tactical marines. This guy's got some nice uh, edges on the shield, so you can just drag your edge of the brush against it and pick out every corner, every point quite easily. And pick out the top of the fingers as well, and just go around as neat as you possibly can, and pick out all of the points of the armour with this Dawnstone. Like I say, normally with the Space Marines, I do a very quick dry brush over the entire armour with this. And then any areas that I need to neaten up, I'll do an edge highlight afterwards. But that's when the majority of it has already had a dry brush on it. So it's really quick. You can get about 10 Space Marines done in a few hours. And the more you do, the quicker you get. But these character models are worth spending a little bit more time on. Just going around each armor plate. We're going to do the same with Carrack Stone. And you want to focus this more on the points. But it's exactly the same as before. Brace your hands on the table and just paint nice straight lines. And any bit you put this Carrick Stone on will stand out. It makes the model pop with that. If you do make any errors and you do some wobbly lines onto bits of armour that didn't need it, you can either go back and tidy it up with Mechanicus Grey, or you can add some battle damage to it later. So it's not the end of the world if you go wrong, you can always cover up mistakes. And your paint is thin anyway, so it doesn't get too bad. So we're going to go back to the bone now. Normally I wouldn't even bother doing the base colours, but because it's a character model, we'll use Zandri Dust, uh, the, the base colour, and we're going to go over all of those bone areas again. But this time you want to leave a little bit of the previous Zandri Dust, as well as a little bit of the brown that was there. And this will give us more gradients. It's not as stark either. When we go up to the next colours, we're going to use a Shabti Bone and Screaming Skull. And if you put a Shabti Bone straight over a Zandri Dust which has been washed, it does look quite a bit different. Which isn't bad on like a normal tactical marine, but on a character model, you can make them look a little bit better with minimal effort. You can see it's starting to de define that helmet now. And I'm keeping the brush strokes in a way that the armour or the bone would appear. So the next highlight for the bone is a Shabti bone. And you want to go over almost like a layer. And the main thing with this is painting with the, the shape of the, the area that you're working on with bone that works the most. I'd probably say that's the most important bit is paint with the bone. Especially on things like the curved horns on his banner. If you start on the innermost part and then drag the brush out to the point you can get some really nice straight lines which gives a nice effect of bones. next colour for this is Screaming Skull and this is mainly just for the edges 
If you wanted to go any further than this colour as well, you can mix some white into the Screaming Skull, or you can put a bit of Pallid Witch Flesh in. You can see you can keep it quite dark as a bone, or you can go as bright as you want to. It's completely up to you on this. Same with the teeth, they're so small you only need a tiny bit down one edge or just on the point, and they're picked out. And with those curved bones on the back, start fairly low down on the bone and then just drag it in a straight line. There's only three lines there, and that's all it needs. And you can see it's added texture to it. We're going to highlight the silver now, we're going to use Iron Breaker and just kind of do an edge highlight or like a very thin layer over the top of all of those silver areas to make them stand out and the little vents that are on the side of his helmet as well and there's quite a lot of silver areas you can do. I've kept it minimal. I'm going to highlight all the gold with Liberator Gold now. And this is mainly an edge highlight and a layer on some areas like the weapon. You just want to layer over the, the top parts of it. And there's some bits on this model. The only bit I haven't shown is the inside of his cape which was done in a similar way to the red wet blending on the back. I've mixed in a bunch of different browns. It, um, it's definitely worth experimenting, maybe trying on some models you're not too fussed about, just to get into the habit of using wet blending techniques. I've definitely got to try more of it. I'm getting towards the end now and we're just going to add a little bit of Doomball Brown onto that staff to make that stand out. You, in the best bet with this is either dry brushing it or painting individual layers on each of these straps that go around and then you can highlight them up with Tuscore fur afterwards. And with the Tuscore you kind of just need a line so you just paint the top of each one of these folds or straps that go around the weapon and it will pick those out. I'm going to go on to painting the rune stones and I've painted all of mine using the fang. I've made them a little bit more like a magical sort of rock as opposed to just a bog standard rock. They've already got grey armour so I've done a bluey grey for their rune stones. So I'm outlining them with Fenrisian Grey. You can see they just stand out from the normal Mechanicum Grey. And there's a few of these around their armour. They have them on weapons as well. So to start the gemstones, we're going to use Caliban Green. I'm just going to cover the entire gemstone with this colour. Just try not to get it on the gold on the outside. And you might need two coats of this, two very thin coats just to cover it. The next colour we're using is Warpstone Glow and with this we just want to kind of pick out the raised parts of this gemstone. So you can see the lines along the middle and along the sides. We're just going to go over those with this Warpstone Glow but we're going to keep the Caliban Green everywhere else. And you can also go around the outside of the gemstone. You're pretty much outlining the whole thing. And then we're going to use Moot Green, we're going to do exactly the same thing. This is as thin a line as you can get though. And just outline over those top parts of the gem. And try and paint in straight lines as well. Move the model around if it helps. 
The last colour we're going to add to this is Screaming Skull and you could mix this into the Moot Green so it's not as bright um, or you can leave it as this and you just want to pick out as thin a line as you can go around the outside again. And it's quite a bright gemstone. What you can do if you wanted to um, blend this a little bit more is use Way Watcher Green which is a glaze and just do a very thin layer over the top of it and it will blend the Screaming Skull into the other green colours and it will blend it all. But I'm just going to use Ard Coat on this and put that over the top and that will make it shiny when it's fully dried. And it's such a small area that having that Screaming Skull makes it stand out from the rest of the model. But they're very straightforward to do, it's more practice and patience and straight lines. Now with those little rune stones we're going to pick it out with White Scar. I'm just going to paint in where the runes or the where the symbols are on them. And then we're going to make them glow later, well, straight after this, using Gilliman Blue. But just try and be as neat as possible and mark out where these runes are on the, on the stones. We're also going to paint his eyes on the helmet, or the lens. So we're going to use the Gilliman Blue on the rune stone, and I paint the entire thing, so over the entire stone and the rune itself, and that makes it even more blue than it was while making the, the actual rune on it glow. And then we're going to use Blood Letter, which is another glaze, and we're going to use that on the lens on the helmet. And you could do two coats of that if you want it to stand out even more. So we're using Medium with Seraphim, sepia, and we're doing a one to one mix and going over all of the bone areas and this is to blend those colours together again and the reason we've used the medium is to thin it down it doesn't leave the watermarks and it also keeps it quite lighter and then we're going to do exactly the same mix but we're going to use Agrax Earthshade with the medium we're going to go over the fur first of all and that just darkens them down a little bit. And then we're going to go over all of the bone with that as well. You can skip that step, I just wanted it grungier than it was. And that's the model done. So it's a bit more of a process than I'd normally go to with an infantry model. But it's a character and it looks nice. And there's a hell of a lot of colours on there that stand out.